Uh, the room code is Plongis. P L O N G I S. Plongis. Plongis. Hello, and welcome to. Today I'm joined by a Hat and Time modder, the creator of many ice surfing rifts, and also um, Pickle Snatcher, a thing that I apparently had a part in, and also did a bunch of voice work for a bunch of other people's mods, including Hat Kid Steals the Declaration of Independence, too. There, there they are. Hey, Hello. It's me. You want to introduce yourself? My name is Hu Tao, and I do do a gaming. Yeah, yes. I, I do the gaming. They should let you go berserker mini golf and have two clubs. Y yes, that should be a mode they add to this game. Yeah, that, that's what the double hand like the they add a second hand, but all it's for is a second club, and you carry both at the same time. Anyways, uh, we're playing Cherry Blossom, everyone's favorite course. Jay, are you saying that your favorite course is Arizona Modern? You are a fool. Kyoto Get Valley? Out of here. Wrong. It's Cherry Get Blossom. Out of here. It's like that that post, like, your favorite Pokemon is Scyther. What's your favorite Pokemon? And everyone's like, I guess it's Scyther. Oh, that's going right over the other side. Oh, uh, no. We'll say, I do have a bit more golf experience from today, because I did play golf with your friends earlier. Oh, yeah, of course that carries over. Yeah, 2D golf totally translates to 3D golf. Yeah, when they give you the power meters and everything, it really helps you dial in how to swing a plastic controller for maximum efficiency. Indeed. As you can see, I am... I'm just, I'm just doing great here. You're, you're giving it so much gas. Yeah, you okay, can, I yeah I need to slow it down. Yeah, you if you hit the menu button, you can go to settings and adjust the stroke power, or you can just tap it lighter. See, there we go, much Perfect. better. And you're lined pretty much right up. No guarantees I can get it in though. No, it seems like most people who are still new to the game. Nice. As I say, it seems like most people who are like still new to the game end up shooting around the hole more than at the hole. I, I do that, like, in actual mini-golf. I think that's how you're supposed to play actual mini-golf. Huh, I guess I, I'm doing I, it right then. I've tried talking about this with a bunch of the other guests, but I only get, like, through part of my thoughts. Actual mini-golf is, like, 99% house rules. It's just, like, everyone kind of just goes when they want. Nobody's keeping score. If it's close enough to the hole, just kick it in. No rules, just right. Outback Steakhouse. Is that the actual Outback, like, slogan? It was No Rules Just Right. There's actually a fun Night Vale tweet about it that I love. Okay, you know what I'm mad about? Yeah? So at Outback, they had these things called Blooming Petals, which are just the Blooming Onion, but smaller. Yeah. And like, then they got rid of it. Yeah. Which is just, like, I don't want the full Blooming Onion. I just want the small one. I could just hit the, the button to teleport. But it is a physical map, so let's take advantage. Sadly, this is not an outback. I'm just gonna teleport because this is uh, no rules here. Teleport, Mario. I'm very concerned that my my funny teleport Mario joke might not translate well for a predominantly Zoomer audience. Yes, I don't understand that joke. As but, as a Zoomer, I do not understand uh, that joke. There was I forget what nationality was. There was a Mario Let's player by the name of I think Electrical Beast who had this very eclectic sense of humor, and every time he had to make a jump cut, he would go, Teleport, Mario! Mario, use teleport attack. And as you can see, Mario just teleported. And then cut to it like Mario had to teleport. That is, uh, that is great. That is great, I love that. I, I love the Wild West of everyone doing a Mario 64 Let's Play and everyone just making up their own wacky rules on how to do it. We should, we should bring that back. Yes. I am... I'm struggling with this. It's fine. We're not here for winning. We're here for talk. Speaking of talk, I, I, I need to know. Who figured out that if you wear the, the ice hat and you hit a sloped surface, it just does that? No, it's not the ice hat. It's uh, you just uh, dive at it. It's no bonk badge. Yeah. I don't know who figured that out. Okay. 
probably a speedrunner or something. And did you have the first like dedicated map for that, or were there oh, others? No, there's a way more famous one that's just called No Bonk Surfing. Oh, okay. I'm pretty sure it's like one of, if not the most popular map, like uh. the most played one. And I kind of just stole the idea. Yeah, you, you, you figured that you would get in on a fake ground floor by just coming up with a name that makes yours sound like it was like one of the first. It was actually for a mod jam that was temperature themed. Ah. So I was like, hey, ice, no bonk surfing, ice surfing rift. Oh, so it doesn't even need to be an ice surface? Uh, no, it just needs to be angled. Oh. I will say, um, it was originally called ice sliding rift. But then I changed it to Ice Surfing Rift because that sounds cooler. And you made a very wise decision. And also, uh, the original Ice Sliding Rift was kind of a broken mess of a level. Mm. I actually remember, I was like... I, like, a few months after I released it, I decided, Hey, I'm gonna change all- I'm gonna change the icons and the screenshots on the Steam page. But for some reason, I decided, Hey, I'm gonna update the mod and the editor to do that. Big mistake, because when I, like, got it ready and then I released it, I failed to realize that that somehow deleted the timepiece at the end. So I spent, like, an hour freaking out trying to fix that. Jeez. <laughs> Look, the, the edit, the hand time editors held together with duct tape and glue. Oh, well, it's UE3. I'm amazed yep. they made the game in UE3. I think those puzzles made, like... It was, it started yeah. development in like 2012, I was about which to say, was the before first, UE4. Yeah, the first alpha was 2012. Nice. I will say, um, when I saw my first golf ball, I was just desperately grabbing for it because I didn't know you just press down on the control <laughs> stick. So I was just oh, oh. on the floor, desperately grabbing at it. Oh, I love when you're trying to figure out how to make a VR game work, so you're just like, just like, Terrifyingly, like pawing at nothing, trying to hope in vain. Please, how do I pick up the ball? Please, I need to know. Alex, please grab the ammunition. There was an insane post on the the Half Life Alex Steam forums that I think about a lot. Somebody mad that there was locomotion and the gravity gloves in Half Life Alex, and the game shouldn't have either. I'm, if they really I'm want sorry? to push the boundaries of VR. Oh, it's well, your that's, ball. That's me. Yeah. And someone's like, what, do you have a, like, a room the size of City 17 that you want to walk around in? And they never replied back to explain themselves. Huh. The Steam forums are full of some of the most unhinged human beings I've ever bared witness to. Look, anyone who decided to go on a place called the Steam forums, like... Well, you no. Can, you can no. bet that that's... <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> oh. <laughs> If, so it, close. It, it heard me going, no, no. Oh my god. I, no. Jesus. No. Do you want to become part of the problem? And, uh, like yes, I'm punch? gonna I'm gonna become the bit. Yeah. Yeah. Hooray, and now you can putt it with the tiny putter. Oh yeah, we can. Boop. Yay! Oh god, I stepped on my, I stepped on my HMD cord. Oh no! Topspin sounds like the name of like a bootleg Beyblade, like you'd get from like CVS. Uh, true. I used to have Beyblades, like that was a thing in my school. Pokemon was never a thing for some reason. Z zero market saturation in Ohio. Well, yeah, or like it just wasn't a thing in my school. I'm just, I'm like, I'm picturing a map of like the continental U.S. like, like Pokemon popularity. All the, all the states are in like, like a dark red or orange, and Ohio is just like gray or blue. Zero. No, Ohio is just not there. Oh, it's just a void. Like, it's just edited out. All right. All right. Oh yeah, it's my turn. Yeah, they don't. It, they don't make it super. I mean, they make the ball appear, but. Oh yeah, this this course is a, an interesting one. Um, one of my favorite little factoids: the Poke Walker, which came with um, Heart Gold and Soul Silver, is considered the most accurate pedometer ever made. It's for yeah, and it's for a Pokemon game. Yeah, it's you put your Pokemon in it, and then you go walk around with them, and the steps that you track 
uh, will give you experience points and items. It needed On that to topic, uh, did you ever play Pokemon Go? No. When Pokemon uh, Go was big, I didn't have a phone that could run it. And when I got a phone that could run it, nobody I knew was playing Pokemon Go anymore. Pokemon Go is... I think it could technically be considered my first Pokemon game. Wow. I think, possibly. It came so. out in 2016. Yes, mid-2016. Oh, there's a ball over there. I think this one's one of the, the fun pride balls. Is it? Or no? Uh, no, it's just teal. Oh, teal. For whatever reason, that one's stuck in my mind. I'm thinking... I don't know what I'm thinking. I did get the trans ball earlier, though. What course is that on? Uh, it's on Bogey's Bonanza. Oh, it's on Bogey's Bonanza. Uh... Not enough. Not enough, but I'll take it. I'd rather get close enough that I can line it up better. We'll go nice. rub it in. <laughs> Still not home one, though. I was, I, if that went in. <laughs> Instead of calling, like, platformers... Like scrimblows, like platformer scrimblows. We should call them Bing Bing Wahoos. I thought scrimblows were just characters from um, video games that you want in Smash, but nobody else wants in Smash. I thought that was just what a scrimblow is. I feel like scrimblow can be used for basically like it's it's a universal term now. It's like you can a, use, just use it for like a funny little guy. Funny little guy. There's, there's, also the, there's also the Scrunkly, which is like a cute thing. Ah, I know there's there's Blorbo from my shows, which is to refer to a beloved character. There's Glup Shitto, which is to refer to a stupid Star Wars character. Yes, nondescript Star Wars character. Oh, nondescript. I thought it was just any like expanded universe character or any character yes. that they over elaborate on. Or just just a uh, just just. Character Star Wars that you know nothing about, just so most of the just characters. A it's just a glup shitto. I was talking about um, cause um, it's become a fun game at my work. Fun in air quotes, cause I don't think it's terribly fun, yeah. but a it's fun a game at my fun. work where, cause I've never the only Star Wars I've ever seen is the holiday special. That. It's very. That's an interesting uh, exposure Place to, start. to Star Wars. Yeah, I mean, I know like the the, the basic gist, because um, I, I said that by this point I probably have enough pop cultural osmosis. Oh. oh. No. I was like, at this point I probably have enough pop cultural osmosis that I could probably just describe what happens in all the Star Wars films, having never seen the Star Wars films. So it became a game at my work to ask me like, hey, what happens in this Star Wars movie? And the general consensus... I, I wasn't really geez, aiming that one. The general consensus I've gotten seems to be... I have the fourth one down pretty good. Thank you, Phineas and Ferb episode about Star Wars. Um, the fifth one I'm spotty on. Um, and all of my knowledge comes from... Um, what I remember of the Family Guy episode. And then the sixth one, I just kind of know the ending and the beginning. Because I know of the, the Ewoks. And that's enough. But, what about um. The prequels. What do you know about the prequels? First one is very weird. It kind of looks like an edutainment game because it's, it's very obviously 90s CGI and 90s design sensibilities. This is pod racing. The kid harvests some crap out of the dirt. And then the later films, he goes evil. But the first one's a lot of pod racing. There's a diner in it that looks like it came from just like a generic point and click sci-fi adventure. I'm pretty sure that's uh, episode two, actually. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. Well, look at me. But um, in in one of the discussions, they were like, oh, what happens in this film? And I forgot the name of Mark Hamill's character. You know, one of the most <laughs> beloved characters. You know, one of the most famous characters in fiction. Yeah, and so... What's that guy? Uh, is that, is that Glup Shitto? Yeah, so to bring it back around, I would have to describe, you know, our dear friend Luke as a Glup Shitto. Oh, uh, God, that is... That is uh, fun. Yeah, I was like, uh, his name's like Lucas? 
And they're like, no, because all I, I knew, I know for a fact, Jesus, oh, they're albatross. Wow. Wow. Really want to take that shortcut. Otherwise, you got to be like me and flipping bonk around here in the nosebleeds. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Star Wars. Yeah, because I know I knew the character was a stand-in for George Lucas because I remember they did an interview with Mark Hamill, where um, he delivered a line how he thought the character should react, and George Lucas is like, "No, that was awful." So, um, Mark Hamill just essentially just did what he thought George Lucas would do in that situation, and George was like, "That's perfect." That's perfect. It's like poetry. It, exactly. it rhymes. It's. It's like poetry. Wow. You okay? Yeah. Oh, you you pulled through that, that really albatross. Helped. Really nice. helped you. Nice. I got a sixty-nine. Oh, nice. I I, I so, do uh, feel bad that I really bonked that one up, but uh. Oh, you're right here, uh, and look at you're the tiny club. Oh wow, tiny club. All right. Uh, let's make this worse. Oh boy, I can't wait. 